Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about how to make your own watercolor. Welcome to Art with Miss Robinson. Let's talk about what you're going to need. First, you're going to need water. Then you're going to need some white vinegar. White vinegar is going to help not grow mold in your bottles if you leave them for a long period of time. And you're going to need some empty bottles, preferably clear. You'll also need some water-soluble markers. They can be your old dry markers that you can't really use them to draw with anymore, or you can use wet ones. In order to use markers to make your new watercolors, you're going to need to use the color wheel. So let's talk a little bit about color. First, let's talk about those analogous colors. Analogous colors are good for mixing. When you look at a color wheel, they're the colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. They're neighbors. So like this example of the violet, the red violet and the red would be an analogous set. Looking at this color wheel, you can kind of see what colors go well together as an analogous set. So if you're going to mix colors of markers within one bottle, yellow, yellow, green, and green would be a great group. Um, I don't know that I would mix blue, purple, and blue, green. That purple and the green together will give you a little bit of a mud problem. So let's talk about that. So complements are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel, like red and green. Now if you mix red and green together, they're going to give you a mud color. They're called complements because they make each other look good when paired side by side. But when you're mixing color, you want to stay away from mixing complements unless you're trying to get a brown, a gray, or a black. For this reason, it's a really good idea to use the color wheel to organize your markers. I set my neutrals aside, my browns and my grays and my blacks aside. Let's talk about what to do. You're going to take your markers and remove the cap. You'll take a group of color, so I used all my blues together, my light blues and dark blues. Um, remove the caps, put them in the bottle. You're going to place them upside down in the bottle. Kind of shake them a little bit so that all the tips are touching the bottom of the bottle. Then you're going to add a little vinegar. That's going to keep mold from growing in your watercolors. And you'll add some water just to cover the tips. We want this to be a strong color, so don't add too much water. You can always add more later. Place the lid on and then just store it overnight somewhere. I like to let mine sit overnight. You're going to repeat this for the rest of the markers in your um, set, how many ever you have. I had enough to do each of the six colors on the basic color wheel plus gray and brown. I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a time lapse with my orange and so I set it up. You can see that the um, water is absorbed into the markers and then something else happened. You remember those pesky analogous and complementary colors? Well this happened. There was a blue in my orange and so I got brown. I just poured that into another container and <laughs> started again with the leftover orange markers that I had. I only had a few. Now they're ready to use. We're going to pour these into little containers with lids so that we can paint out of them. And having the, all the secondary colors already mixed, the Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, you're ready to paint whatever you want. Oh yeah, and here's my black and gray mixture. I also had the brown mixture from my little snafu earlier um, in another container. In the next video, you're going to see um, how I, I use them personally, but you can use them like regular watercolors. You're going to add a little water to them because they're strong, but they really make a nice, intense color on the paper.